if you put it into a commercial vehicle or a school bus and create a super Wi-Fi hotspot. And you take an RCL 600, which is rugged, industrialized, has a high temp range on it, and you typically will mount that um, towards the front of the vehicle underneath the dashboard. This is your network. It's a, it's a dedicated, a private network. Hey guys, welcome to Embedded Toolbox, the video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And over the last couple of weeks, we've been taking a really close look at how remote learning can be enabled using CBRS technology. And we've been doing that with the pink shirted Daniel Quant. How are you doing, Daniel? Yeah, good, good. Feeling very pink today. So in the last edition, we covered the Multitech RCL 600 and its benefits uh, in terms of integration and being able to DIN rail mount it. Now we're actually looking at a use case where that can all be put into action, perhaps within a school bus, let's say, and really expand the mobility of the CBRS technology to, to the ultimate level. So Daniel, how difficult is it to deploy this type of technology into a vehicle? You know, you've got all of these considerations now with inside this mobile environment from, you know, the enclosure and the ruggedness of it, the packaging, um, the power, and then obviously the connectivity because you need to be able to get a suitable amount of uh, data throughput and bandwidth. What's, a, what's the integration like? Well, it's, it's actually not so difficult. I mean, um, many of you guys uh, probably went to CES last year in the back of taxis, heavily congested between <laughs> convention sites, and you probably had an advertisement screen right in front of your eyes, you know, um, selling you something. And at the end of the ride, you, you transacted with a point of sale terminal using your credit card and you were off, right, to your next meeting. And, um, and, and that's really using a device, a router or a gateway, typically in the glove box, wired up into that screen and that point of sale terminal. And, and it's really not much different than that if you put it into a commercial vehicle or a school bus and create a super Wi-Fi hotspot. And um, you take an RCL 600, which is rugged, industrialized, has a high temp range on it, and you typically will mount that towards the front of the vehicle underneath the dashboard um, and, and you know, use the, something similar to the DIN mount in, in order to mount that into the chassis of the vehicle. And then you wire up the antenna. So up one side, you run the Wi-Fi and you use an adhesive mount onto the windshield. You take the cellular, you wire that up, perhaps to the other side of the windshield, another adhesive mount you lose very little link budget um, getting through into the vehicle, into the antenna. Um, you can, in some cases, incorporate directional antennas in order to really push the beam in a certain direction. In many cases, omnidirectional is good enough. And then, of course, connecting up the power. Well, you know, a product like an RCL 600 has a voltage range from 12 to 48 because there's a lot of industrial locations, uh, trains for example that run on 48 volts if you look at commercial vehicles and if you look at school buses they're typically going to run off of 24 volt dc um, and and so you've seen the cigarette lighters in your vehicle you can plug in you can get the 12 volts so it's natively there it's just you're high hardwired into it you're not generally using um that, that 12 volt cigarette lighter connection um, and you saw in the video um, that in the back of uh, my white car there, we actually have an AC power outlet that's connected to the car battery. So I just plugged into that. I mean, it was as simple as plugging it into my house. But if I wanted it to be there for a longer term, then yeah, I would wire into the uh, native 12 volt connection of the vehicle. So Daniel, uh, throughout the course of this series, we've seen you go from the microcell to the e-cell to the R-cell, um, all of them leveraging CBRS technology in this use case. Um, how do they compare and what can you expect in terms of performance, uh, you know, bandwidth, uh, data throughput in the different implementations we saw? 
Yeah, so I, I think you hit on it there. It's about consistency. Remember, this isn't a public network that's best effort. This is your network. It's a, it's a dedicated, a private network. And so for that reason, you see a great amount of consistency. It doesn't matter whether it's a, um, a, a microcell type device or whether it's the e-cell device that was you know, connecting Wi-Fi access points versus Chromebooks. Um, you're going to see a very, uh, a very consistent level of um, connectivity. Let's assume that you've um, deployed your network with the right level of base stations and density for where you see the, um, the, the deployments and the capacity. Let's assume that, that you did a good job doing that. Then you're going to see consistency across all these devices. And, and let's think back to where we were um, at the beginning uh, of, of of this we were highlighting how 40 percent of students don't have an internet connection or if they do have one it's a very unreliable connection they can't do reliable zoom like we're doing right now and so if we can imagine that the kind of throughput that we saw of over 10 megabits per second well over 50 megabit per second on the downlink I think it's fair to assume that that you can provide 25 plus 5 connectivity to your students and, and that would make a world of difference um, between um, a unreliable one way connection that would really enable you to interact uh, in real time with with your teacher and be able to watch content and share material um, that you need for, for your uh, course material. Beyond that, however, Daniel, we have alluded to throughout the course of this series that obviously remote learning isn't the only application for this sort of technology. You know, there's uh, you mentioned construction. We've uh, there's obviously first responder type use cases. What are some of the uh, additional markets where CBRS and some of multi-text offerings can play? Yeah, uh, great question. So um, just within education. There's a number of different applications outside of remote learning um, to be able to manage building ventilation systems, uh, to be able to do video surveillance, perhaps around the campus, uh, track school buses. I mean, there's lots of different types of applications that are over and above remote learning. But if we look for a second outside of uh, education, then if we imagine the total addressable market, um, about one third of that I would consider industrial. So think um, energy, um, ports, mines, factories, all of this kind of stuff, right? That represents about, you know, if we're going to thumb wag it, that's about one third of the addressable market. What's often a surprise for people is that actually government represents about 25%. Now, the government is already an incumbent in the band, but outside of that, you know, leveraging cellular technology, there's a number of use cases that central government is, is looking at and deploying, but also municipal governments as well. Anything from video surveillance of their buildings to traffic management and, and so on. So, so that represents 25%. And then you have um, hospitality, you know, sports stadiums, venues, shopping malls, and, uh, and, and even hotels, maybe. And, and that represents a good 15 or so percent of the market. And the remaining 15 percent or so is easily accommodated in commercial buildings. After all, 40 percent of all data sessions and voice calls that we make start from inside buildings. And buildings have often really poor cellular connectivity, right? Because uh, it's more difficult to get that coverage into a building versus putting the, um, the base stations in the building and working your way out. So, so that's, you know, broadly speaking, that's kind of how the market splits out. Uh, it's a broad market. Every segment of, uh, of society is keen to take advantage of what is up to 150 meg of spectrum that's that's free to use that's been given by the government to everybody to use in a way in which can improve um, productivity and, um, and, and and growth of the economy that's excellent so I'm um, on our way out Daniel where should people go if they want to find out more about CBRS technology and then of course ways to implement it 
well, come visit um, www.multitech.com um, and of course the CBRS Alliance, um, which is focused on deploying cellular technology into the CBRS band.